Hello, everyone. Uh, back again with more Chapter 6. Uh, we're going to do a small topic, the number of numbers needed. This uh, can be found in the textbook, Section 6.6. .6. Also in your slides, uh, the number needed at the beginning of the Part 2 slides. But I'm going to cover them in a fresh way uh, using an R script which I will provide on the server, uh, numberneeded.r. So uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, take a look at the topic itself, which actually means I need to bring up the textbook. One moment, please. Forgot to do that. Um, here we go. Oh, surely I, had, I do have it somewhere. Ah, yes, we do. Uh, so... Section 6.6 .6, uh, asked us to consider uh, the following um, topic in expected value for a random variable. Um, so remember that a random variable is a number whose value is the result of some chance process. And the expected value of the random variable is the average or the mean of its values over many, many repetitions of that chance process. So um, for today's example, we want to consider the following chance process. Suppose you pick a real number, call it x1, between 0 and 1 at random. And you pick another real number, call it x2, at random, again between 0 and 1, and you add it to x1. Now, if the sum, x1 plus x2, exceeds 1, then stop. But otherwise, pick a third real number, x3, and add it to the sum of the previous two. And if that sum, x1 plus x2 plus x3, exceeds 1, then stop. And if you still haven't exceeded 1, you pick a fourth real number, add it to the previous three, Keep on checking the sum that way until it exceeds 1. So the, um, what you're going to do is count the number of numbers that you have to pick to make the sum of those numbers exceed 1. Let's call that random variable x. So you know x could be 2, or it could be 3 or it could be four or even more, depending on how small those random numbers that you pick happen to be. And what we're going to do is figure out a way to estimate the expected value of x. So heading to our R script, what we'll first do is uh, experiment a bit to see if we can use some simple R commands to uh, recreate this process of successively picking um, real numbers and adding them together. And we'll check to see when their sum exceeds 1. So I'm going to set up a little vector called sum that currently just is 0. And then I'm going to pick myself a new number. And as you can see in the global environment over here, I happen to get my new random real number to be about 0.2. Now on line 9 here, I'm going to uh, say that sum shall be sum plus the new number. So I'm increasing sum by the new number and binding the name sum back to that again. So now sum is 0.2. Now that does not exceed 1. So I'm going to grab a new, new number. I'm going to run line 8 again. And I got about 0.32, as you can see over here in the global environment. I'm going to add that on to sum by running line 9. Sum is now up to 0.535. That's not bigger than 1. So I'm going to get myself another new number. Now new number is about a 0.39. I will increase my sum by that number. And I'm up to 0.927, still not over 1. So I go back up to line 8, take a new number, increase the sum by that number. 
Oh, well, the new number this time was 0.785. Now the sum is 1.7. That's more than one. So I should stop. Hmm. How many of these numbers did I have to pick? Gee, was it a three? Was it four? Was it five? I, I, I can't remember. It really seems like I ought to keep count when I'm doing this, huh? So let's try this again. But I'll just make R keep count for me. I'll, I'll start a, a little vector called count. And initially, it's, it's zero, OK? And uh, after I um, increase my sum by my new number, I'll also remember to increase count by one, OK? And let me try this again. So I'm going to clear my global environment. And uh, sorry, I lost the number needed. Um, let me get back. Oh, there it is. Let's see if I can somehow get this back. Oh, no, I'll just. Get it back this way. There we go. OK. And so I start off my sum being 0. My count is also 0. I get a number. Increase sum by the number. Increase the count to 1. The new number was pretty big. I go get another number now. That was a 0.4. Increase sum by that number. I'm already over. Increase the count to 2. I can stop now. My sum is over 1. I did that in two numbers. So you can see that in this process, I've got to keep track of my uh, total. And I've got to keep track of the count, how many numbers I actually picked. And I need to keep doing this until the sum exceeds 1. So this uh, brings up the idea that maybe I could accomplish this uh, process using a while loop. Check out this while loop on line 14. I begin by initializing the state of my process. My sum starts out at 0. My count starts out at 0. But then while sum is less than 1, I make a new random number between 0 and 1. I increase my sum by that number. And I increase my count by 1. So let's give this a try. Again, I'll clear my... Um, well, I won't clear the global environment. Um, I'll just go ahead and set sum to zero, count to zero, and now run the while loop. So that while loop was actually, uh, the code within it was repeated four times because I had to pick four new numbers until the sum exceeded one. Over in the global environment, we see count as four we see that the last new number that was picked, 0.44, and we see the final sum, the first one that went over 1. So we got the basic process down. So let's encapsulate this into a function that will just complete the entire process of picking those real numbers until their sum exceeds 1 and that will report the count to us. So that's the function that starts on line 24, the number needed function. It's not a function of any parameters at all. There's nothing inside these parentheses. And the body looks exactly like our while loop with its setup. But after the while loop, we have the expression count, that being the final expression in the body of the function. It's going to be what this function returns. So I'm going to teach this function to the global environment. Ta. And let's give it a try. 
So I'm going to move uh, my R script over here a little bit so you can see what pops up in the console when we give number needed a try. Two. All right. I'm going to give that another try. I'm going to go down. Lost it again. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of silly to keep that R script uh, out like that, but uh, there it is. There we go. So I'm going to run that again. This time it took me three numbers. I'm going to run it again. This time it took me two numbers. Run it again. It took me two numbers, and so on. Now, uh, when you think about uh, the process a little bit, you realize that you don't have to um, give a name to the new number that you have picked, as I did on line 28 in the body of number needed. I could just go ahead and add a random uniform right on to the sum. So here's a slightly abbreviated version of the number needed function where I just, inside the while loop, increase sum by a random uniform. So I'm going to go ahead and teach that to a global environment. And I'll go up here and try number needed again. And you'll see it works exactly the same way. Yep. OK. Um, why don't we add a little feature to our function while we're at it? So we've been adding on uh, random real numbers between 0 and 1 until we reach a sum of 1 or more. Uh, why don't we allow ourselves to strive for any target at all, any target number to reach at all? So um, this new number needed function here, on starting on line 49, has one parameter called target whose default value is 1. Again, we start with our sum and count being zero, but we're going to do the code in the while loop as long as the sum is less than target. So let's teach this new function to our global environment. And let's give it a try where the target is three. Here we go. So it took me six random real numbers between zero and one to get a sum above three. Let me try it again. It took me 11 of them. Let me try it again. It took me seven of them. So clearly, it takes more of these random zero to one numbers to reach a high target than to reach one. Now, let's get back to that question of estimating the expected value of the number needed. Um, what we need to do is repeat that process of grabbing real numbers between 0 and 1 until their sum exceeds 1. We need to repeat that a lot of times, keep track of how many numbers we needed each time, and then average up the number of numbers needed. And that average will estimate the expected value of the number of numbers needed. Number needed sim tries to accomplish this. It's a function of two parameters. How many times you're going to simulate the random process, that's reps, default value 10,000, and the target that your sum is aiming for, default value 1. Now we're going to set up a results vector to hold the numbers needed each time. So it's going to be a numeric vector reps long. And then we've got a for loop for i and 1 to reps. Numbers needed in the ith place is going to be the number needed as computed by the number needed function that we just find, where the target is set to whatever the user says the target it needs to be. And then after the for loop, we just report the mean of the numbers needed. Let's teach this to the global environment. And let's give it a try. Number needed. 
Number needed sim reps is 100,000, and we're going to be using the default value of 1 for the target. Ready, set, go. And it takes a wee second, but the average of the numbers needed was about 2.718. Um, it's a math fact that the average needed is actually going to be that number E that uh, you may remember from high school math, about 2.71828, uh, that actually showed up in uh, the hats problem that we considered at the beginning of the chapter. Very interesting. So that happens. So it, when, when, when your target's one, the expected number of numbers needed is E. Um, might be fun to add a little uh, feature to our function to get a table of the numbers needed as well as a report of the, the mean of them. So the only difference here between uh, the new version of number needed sim and the old version is that there's an extra parameter called table, which by default is false. But if the user sets table to true, then um, we'll get inside the body of this if statement and we'll print out a table of the number needed vector. Let's teach this function to our global environment. And let's give it out. Let's, let's try it out where we have, uh, we're going to use the default number of reps, the default target, but we want a table of the results. So over in the console, we can see the results here where I'm waving the mouse. Um, the table comes first, and of the 10,000 uh, times that we went through the process, 5,067 times, about half the time, it took two numbers to exceed one. But 3,285 times, it took three numbers to exceed one. 1,246 times it took four numbers to exceed one, and so on. And, and sometimes it took quite a few numbers. At once it took nine numbers to exceed one. Uh, the average of the numbers needed was, again, close to E, 2.7097. So we could go on further, and we could uh, you know, add a seed parameter and, and add the features. But I think we've got enough now for you to uh, go ahead and take a deeper look into the textbook and the slides at the number needed function. It uh, may also be quite uh, helpful in some of your homework problems for this chapter. That's all for now.